Okay, hello everyone. Now we're here to talk about the Virgo Rashi as part of my ongoing series on the Rashis. So, all about Virgo Rashi. Two of the most important points to understand about this sign, Virgo. It's a very mysterious sign, and it's harder to understand than a lot of the other ones. So two important points. Okay, Virgo, it's not about being a virgin. It's just Virgo, yeah, it comes from virgin in Latin, but really it is uh, the older or the more ancient, more accurate, less embellished translation in Sanskrit. It's called Kanya, which means a young girl or a maiden or like a handmaiden. And so it's definitely implied that one is a virgin, but it's not about calling them a virgin. Um, it's, they're a young girl. So a young girl, if you think about it, one of the main qualities is that they're marked by like a sense of just innocence and um, just kind of like an innate purity and innocence. And sometimes Virgo is described as uh, being like a young girl on a boat with, a, with some grain and a torch and that torch symbolizes fire and purify so there's this kind of purifying fire quality to Virgo and um, the grain the harvest emphasizes the harvest and if you use tropical Rashi's Virgo is always going to be at the harvest time of the year for most temperate climates of the world um, so that's kind of cool and but if you even if you don't use that and you like sidereal rashis, it's still Virgo, still the sign of the harvest. Um, and it rule, you know, Mercury is the Lord of Virgo. Mercury rules like, you know, utilizing everything most efficiently as you can. And that's what harvest is about. That's what the harvest time of year is for. And I also wanted to share that. So, so yeah, so first off, before I, before I move to the next point, Virgo is kind of that sign of being like innocent. And so they're the sign that kind of like needs to be the least conditioned. Whereas the opposite signs like, you know, opposite signs of Mercury or Jupiter signs like Sag and Pisces, they're more signs of like learning like right and wrong and like, you know, like religion and like Dharma and there's a code. Virgo and Gemini too are maybe, they're just, there's a little bit more to it or it's, it's not, they don't work in that exact same sort of way. And um, Virgo, kind of does really well with like um, something that can kind of keep that sense of mental innocence. Um, you know, when you think of like the, like Buddhism or like the, the Buddha mind or things like that, it can kind of remind you a lot of Virgo. So a lot of people are really into Buddhist traditions or Jnana yoga or like the meditative, more um, self-inquiry, self-analysis uh, yogic traditions like Ramana Maharshi, you know, <clears throat> stuff like that. <coughs> that, you know, you'll see a strong Mercury influence in, in them as well. Um, second point I wanted to make <clears throat> is that Virgo rules mountains, and mountains are where everything is really protected. And, um, you know, my teacher Ernst Wilhelm really explained it to me so clearly one time in person. It actually just like made me, <clears throat> I was, <clears throat> one of the, the first time I met him, uh, I remember it so vividly. He was explaining it to me in his living room, and I just freaked out about how much it made so much sense to me because I have a lot of Pisces stuff in my chart. He was explaining the difference between Pisces and Virgo environments. And Virgo represents the pure mountains where everything's pure and pristine and protected and narrowed in from the, like the valley in the mountains. But then that water all like washes all the way down the mountains, down the rivers and all like filters out to the sea. Like where I live, I'm a Pisces and I live, this is a lake, but around me this lake gets filled by the tidal by the ocean there's the ocean all around me there's actually only one neighbor that's not a body of water where i live and so <clears throat> you know this the sea where all the water filters out to that's pisces is like all the just surrendering into the infinite you know what i mean and all that stuff you know um even where the sea is really dirty, you know, how all the filth and dirt goes in there. But then the salt, somehow the salt water, the quality of that ocean magically cleanses it all. You know what I mean? And that has a lot to do with Pisces, and we'll get to that when we get there. But Virgo is that protected, narrow mountain area. You see, so that's why it's a young girl, because a young girl is what we wanted to protect in ancient times. That's like, of all the beings you could use to symbolize that, a young girl is the main thing that you want to protect. And it's not something that you want 
you see, that's why they chose a young girl um, and not a young boy because a young boy, well, young boys were supposed to go out and go hunting and like learn to like survive out in the woods and start their own fire and not be afraid of the animals. So that young boy doesn't have any of that symbolism of like protection and narrowing down young girls that didn't do anything to benefit a woman, a young woman to just like throw her out, make her hunt on her own, start a fire and, you know, watch out for the bears and all that stuff. That's, uh, that could have just traumatized them to the point where they weren't able to be emotionally available when they became a mother and then could, couldn't do their most really critical dharma of being a good mother and raising children, all of that. And so, you know, you end up raising generations and a whole culture and society of emotionally stunted, emotionally traumatized women who end up raising both men and women of the next generation who are going to be emotionally traumatized because men who have no you know, if you don't have a good mother, you, it's a lot harder for you to get um, healthy. And no one has perfect parents. I know if you're watching this, no one has, you're, you know, you're in a psychology, there's no way, you're, you know, we all have issues with our parents. Let's not go into that too much. Um, <clears throat> but you can kind of understand how I'm not trying, I'm really not trying to be sexist or to, you know, gender focus here. But if you look at an ancient uh, culture, and you really look at like, okay, what would have made that ancient culture great? Um, the women were about to have to do major work, you know, when they started stepping into that role of motherhood and all that. So there was no need to go and expose them out and make them go hunting tigers or all this other nonsense. You know what I mean? Um, so it was all about narrowing down. So you'll notice this quality where Virgos are like really wanting to like narrow down. They want to protect the things that they care about, you know, and they're very like devoted, but in this more narrow sense you see like they're like they're that protected young maiden so that's why i wanted to explain that um so now let's go to i hope you guys can see this pdf of uh virgo so so virgo is um here's how parashira describes it living in mountains is the girl rashi so you know, he clearly points out that Virgo represents the mountains and living in the mountains. Um, the girl Rashi, who endowed with strength during the day, is front rising, medium limbs, so they're medium sized body, two footed, so they're biped, they're human, they're articulate, they're intelligent, like Mercury, moving in the south, all the earth signs move in the south with grain and fire. I already explained that. Again, see how Prashra mentions with grain. So it's emphasizing harvest, and, you know, if Prashra, you know, why would that be the case if, if it was sidereal? But anyways, um, grain and fire. And then a Vaisha is um, a merchant. So it's a merchant cast, shiny, chitra colored. So Virgo can represent like shiny things, but that's also implying like chitra means like beautifully crafted, spotless. So Mercury is a sign of like being spotless, beautifully crafted and all that. Um, stormy, Virgo is the sign of being stormy. And that's funny that I'm doing this I'm way behind to do this video. I wanted to do this way back in August when Virgo, before Virgo even started. Today, it's actually the first stormy day in three weeks since the hurricane came. It's funny that I'm doing it now. <laughs> um, so Virgo can be stormy, like a young girl, like how they're kind of like, oh, like having these tantrums or whatever. Um, it's stormy. It's uh, Virgo's, you know, Virgo is where Venus is debilitated, the planet of color. Um, I relate Virgo actually to the color black a lot. It's not mentioned in the suture though. This is my uh, idea, but um, yeah, stormy black. It's Virgo doesn't take in color, you know, or the light as easily. There's something about it that gets in the way there. Um, young, so it's like Mercury. It's like young body, like a young girl, youthful in its attitude and approach. Often um, connected with Thomas, you know, Virgo is all about suffering and working through the suffering. So that's Thomas. And then, uh, you know, Virgo, same with the sixth house is like the sixth sign Virgo. It has to do with using your intelligence to improve life and to just solve problems. So they're big problem solvers. It says existing in children and ruled by Mercury. So that existing in children is also, in my opinion, a hint at that quality of innocence that Virgo is big with. All right. So now, um, now I'm going to share with you guys just a few quick example charts. Um, I hope you guys are able to see that. Okay. So, oh, what am I doing with the outer planets? And I'm a Vedic astrologer. What am I doing with these crazy outer planets on here? Let me remove those real quick. Okay. 
um, not that the other planets don't have a value. It's just that Vedic astrologers, we have so many techniques. I think that a lot of times with Western astrologers, they don't have all those techniques. They lost so much of that over the last few centuries that they have to use the outer planets way more than they're necessary. And so they end up embellishing a lot. Like, or same with the meteors, like Chiron and all this stuff. Come on, Chiron's a freaking rock out in space. Like that is just a, you might as well be reading space stations. Um, <laughs> read the China space station that's falling to earth, <laughs> you know, right now. <laughs> um, not that they don't have a value, but just, just like minuscule compared to something like Jupiter. Um, okay, so this is Franklin D. Roosevelt. Really quick, just he's a Virgo rising. His Mercury goes to the sixth house, just like the sixth sign Virgo, kind of reinforcing that. He was really well known for a lot of like Virgo qualities. If you, if you consider all the presidents, he was really good for, you know, getting our economy straightened out, getting our budget more straightened out. Uh, making the country more efficient and all those things. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I really don't care much about him or anything um, or <clears throat> have much of an opinion about that after that point. Um, this is just a, a friend of mine who actually became a monk after having a spiritual experience. He's around 33 years old. And um, you can see that he has Mercury exalted in the 12th house of like ashrams and renunciation and it's with the sun as well, which is the uh, planet of, um, you know, has a lot to do with your destiny and themes in your life. And so he's also a writer. He wrote a book and that's, you know, he's a scribe. He's like a really, he's really into writing and he's really into calligraphy. And, you know, Mercury is the scribe and the, the writer. And he also even did graffiti when he was young, like growing up in New York City. So Graffiti is just tagging and writing names and stuff. So graffiti is ruled by Mercury. So he was like a graffiti artist at one point, And then he, you know, got disinterested in a lot of those more worldly things with K2 and Libra. You know, K2 and Libra can make you kind of lose interest in worldly things or feel disappointed in those at times. And then he got more into spirituality and became a, um, you know, a Christian monk and lived with, uh, he's lived with Franciscan monks, with Trappist monks, just waking up in the middle of the night, you know, at 4 a.m. and chanting all morning and all that stuff. And so, yeah, that's a cool example of some Virgo energy being used in a strong way since it's, it was strong in that chart. So this person is a Virgo rising and then they also have their K2 in Virgo. So they're very, very focused on Mercury and but because of they have a lot of that K2 Venus quality as well, they have other things going on in their chart um, that make them a healer. But Virgo and Mercury can, can definitely make one a healer. Um, <clears throat> usually has to have the moon involved as well. Um, but so this person has taken that Virgo approach of using the intelligence to solve problems, to improve life in the, um, in the context of being a healer, being a massage therapist. And they are also a yoga teacher. And so, yeah, so they're kind of always, always, you know, working with people, trying to help improve, solve problems, make the body function better, you know, Venus, you know, massage therapy is related to Venus a lot, um, as you could imagine. Um, yeah, and then this, uh, no, that's pretty much all I had to say about this person, but yeah, you know, um, very service oriented person. Let's look at this chart. This is the chart of Leonard Cohen. <sighs> Leonard Cohen's a really cool musician. He, he is not that well known and he played very like somber, kind of like slow, sad music, sort of very Saturnian music. Um, we can see he did have a very strong Saturn with Rahu influence. Um, so he's not, he's, he's kind of like, his music is kind of like debilitated Venus music. Even though I love his music, um, his music, Venus is debilitated there in Virgo. It's like the stormy quality of Virgo where it's sad and kind of dark and not very up, uh, uplifting or positive. And it's like poetry just set to like soft acu acoustic music. Um, and he had a lot of, I guess, uh, songs that had a lot to do with love and loss of love. And you do notice if you've watched my Venus moon starvation videos, notice how Venus is also starved by the moon and apply that to his life, what you learn from those videos. And 
read up about him and it'll make a lot of sense. Don't have time for that now though. Um, one cool thing about him though is that, you know, in the same way that Mercury is about like being very efficient, solving problems, using your intelligence to improve life and all that. Um, he, while he was a singer and all, he was always uh, a very like spiritual person and he uh, actually got all of his money stolen uh, in the end of the 80s. Like, so he had amassed this big fortune, you know, in the 70s and 80s, but he was Canadian and his manager was a US person or something like that. And his manager basically stole all his money. So his, all his money was stolen. Rahu in the sixth house, thieves, right? Um, you know, uh, that's kind of, kind of interesting how he had that Saturn Rahu thing, you know? And um, so all his money was stolen in the late eighties. He's a rock star. You know what I mean? He could have done a lot of other things. He could have just done more tours. He could have just gone and made money. He couldn't get the money through legal issues. So he actually just renounced it all and became a monk. He became a Zen monk and lived in a Zen monk uh, monastery in like Southern California or somewhere for the entire nineties for like over a decade. You know what I mean? And then eventually came back, toured, made some money and then retired and then passed away. Um, <clears throat> so that's just really fascinating. Cause like I was saying, um, Virgo can, Saturn is the main planet of monastic qualities, but Virgo can have a lot to do with that narrowing down, you know, wanting to cut things out, just cut out all those problems, just narrow down, just get to that isolated place. Um, so he also became a monk, like the last example. And you also can notice that K2 is in the 12th house of ashrams. So he had, and the 12th Lord is in the ascendant sun. So he has a lot of those spiritual ashram qualities, um, <clears throat> you know, and Mars is there too. <clears throat> so this was also a person who had that kind of like narrow down quality and also that sort of stormy quality but um and you can also see that sort of uh i'm not trying to make this point that all virgos are going to be monks but that's just one of the possibilities virgo can be a big sign of acting you'll see virgos do acting a lot you'll see a lot of healers who are virgos um a lot of just average people who don't have you know they just don't have anything really noteworthy about them too um all kinds of people but i hope that this gives you guys a good feel for virgo energy and how it works thanks